So hi, Holding the Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with I'm Mark. I'm Marcus from Invent Anime. And we're asking some questions say about their upcoming album, Heaven Earth. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Dude, I'm very stoked. There's a couple of songs that I've been dying to show people. We've we've we got three songs out right now. We got Shed Astray, Emulation Night, and Elysium. Uh but there's just a bunch of other songs that I'm so eager to show people. And I, I'm kind of curious what people are going to think about it. If it's like, uh, if it, they're going to think it's weird, if they're going to think, oh, this is classic human anime with a little twist and, and shit like that. But I, I, I'm very stoked for like a couple of songs that's it's going to be on there for people to see. Yeah. Hell yeah. The album rocks. And that, that oh, yes. most recent single has been on loop for me since it came out. It's so fucking good. <laughs> uh, Immolation of Night. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. That's a sick one. We're playing it live right now as like the last song. People go bananas on that thing live. It's fucking sick. Hell yeah. I saw you guys play it at Lorna Shore's Christmas show before it was even uh, out. And I was like, damn, this song fucking rocks. I'm glad we got to play it because I think we had to cut three songs on that show. Damn. Oh, damn. Yeah. I think the, I think the staff there was like not uh, house staff. So mm-hmm. they didn't have uh, like, I think there was like some communication error so they, uh, something happened with all our like lines, and we just ran back and forth trying to solve it, and it took forever. But it, it turned out great anyway. Hell yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Uh, Heaven Earth is. I think we all of we don't have like a. I don't think we have like a general explanation for that name. We just wanted something wide that could mean. A lot, especially because there's some songs on the album that speaks of the uh, um, loss and dealing with loss. And I think uh, Heavener as a name just fits. Not in a Christian way, I wouldn't say so, but more in a, like a uh, like a end station. Mm. If that explains it pretty well. Yeah, that that makes sense. And yeah. Which, uh, the cover art, I actually just, I don't know what they thought about that. I was not involved that much. I just absolutely love it because it's so, how do you call it, like, ambient in a way? Mm-hmm. Like it speaks in colors, which is nice. And it's just like, oh, it, like I would explain it as some kind of ghost in a positive way mm-hmm. to follow or to observe absolutely nice. i, I like, definitely it, thought it tied into the uh, the title perfectly honestly it fits that's good yeah no you could like imagine that as like not some kind of like conventional heaven but it's i, I kind of like how like that describes following following like not an angel but like yeah like a ghost i think i would use that word yeah hell yeah, yeah. awesome um so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album so the writing process started pretty early, uh, not last year, but the year before that. Uh, we started bouncing out some ideas, um, just trying to like see what direction we were going to go in. But I think the album writing process started when we, we rented a cabin in the middle of Arkansas and we brought land and tours from uh, the plot new, just trying to spit out ideas. Uh, and that went well, like we wrote... Him and I wrote a lot of shit on vocals where they created new songs and like readed songs through our, from our like uh, requests. Because when we write vocals, we usually like, oh shit, the instrumental should have gone like this. And we just tell them, because we had like three or four writing stations set up in that cabin. That's so cool. Which was sick. Yeah. Um, and uh, after that, we were supposed to go to another studio uh, to record stuff. But we just decided on that. Hey, why don't we record singing with with Landon? And he was like, "Yeah, why not?" And then we just did that. But we went back to Texas after Arkansas, uh, and we we basically finished writing the album, you could say. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, and I recorded all the screams. Wait, no, we finished writing the album. Went through all the ideas we did, redid some shit, and then we went back, went to Detroit to Landon's place for ten days, maybe. Recorded most of the singing, and then after that, we. Uh, we went back to Texas and I recorded all the screams and just yeah. finished the whole thing up and basically just went on tour actually Damn. that was that <laughs> alright yeah. and then the mix, mixing process was good because 
<laughs> this is this is JT from Era Photo Bombing. Hi. <laughs> now we basically just after tour we kind of refined some things, redid some things, um, and uh, Trey, our drummer, mixed uh, uh, Dan Bronstein mixed it with together, kind of together with Trey, like so, like direct. Um, feedback and ideas and shit and it turned out great I mean I think that mix was finished on the tour we had this summer with uh, with Era and Alpha Wolf and Thornhill which is pretty good awesome. that was pretty much the process I guess it was a lot of back and forth but this time around we really focused way more on vocals and lyrics which was cool everyone was more invested I don't think we were more focused but we put more energy into it Mm-hmm. for sure which i'm so happy about it turned out so fucking good and i'm so proud of the outcome hell yeah hell yeah love that because this process was so back and forth and touch and go basically did you in at any point kind of lose the vision for the album because it was just so broken up i mean you could imagine that but i think the vision for me personally was like it was just growing and growing and growing because mm-hmm. uh, it's like working on anything like you you kind of care more for the result but mm-hmm. during this i learned so much about myself and my voice and like i got i got to touch on things with my voice that I, i've always had but i've never been able to use it in a professional sense mm-hmm. we kind of took stuff built it made it good make sure it sounded good so i learned so much throughout this process that i would say that it just grew throughout the whole process I'm kind of tired of it now because I've been listening to it a thousand <laughs> times. I can imagine. Other than that, yeah, definitely. Oh my goodness! But you say you're tired of it, but then at the beginning, you were you were so excited for people to still I'm, hear I'm the still record. Ex- to be honest, I'm very excited still. We, I love playing these songs live. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to play more of these songs live. And I just don't listen to it as much as I did like two months ago. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what song off this album took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? I don't know who took the longest to write. I feel like I could say which one went like was the fastest to write. Okay. Uh, okay. And it's the uh, hold on. I gotta look at these how the lyrics right here. So the second to last song is Void Surface. No. Uh, Emberglow, sorry, Emberglow. I have the project names in my head still because they <laughs> they used to have different names. Mm-hmm. And this this usually takes like one or two years to kind of like overwrite inside your mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're getting but close Ember- to a two year mark. <laughs> yeah, uh, Emberglow definitely was definitely a fast song. We wrote that while we were producing the vocals with Landon. Like Damn. it was completely oh, wow. written, like at the end, and it just turned out. Uh, no, actually, it was after we wrote that. We just wanted to add another song. And I did all the lyrics and uh, and the melodies and shit on this song. So, And it's very special to me personally as well. But it was definitely the fastest one. And it was like a last minute add-in because we wanted a song with just singing. No screaming at all, just singing. Hell just yeah. threw it in there, which was kind of cool. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, but what was the other question? Sorry. Your personal favorite. Oh, my personal favorite. It, I've been thinking about this a little bit. I got, I've gotten this question asked for me like a couple of times. I think Shade Astray objectively is the best song on the album because <laughs> um, it has everything I am able to do in one song, <laughs> pretty yeah. much all my range. Uh, but a, a favorite that we haven't showed people yet is False Meridian. It's just a crazy fucking song. <laughs> And I'm so excited to see what people are going to think about that song. Also very excited to play live. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's it's a crazy song. It also has like pretty much anything I can do in one song. Pure awesome. chaos. <laughs> yeah. Um, Definitely. So how did the track list for the album come about? Did you like the opener be the opener? Closer be a closer? Did you shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? I think we shuffled it around a little bit. Some songs made sense. Uh, we wanted Shade of Straight to be early on. We want to listen to be towards the end. Uh, and uh, I think Immolation of Night was kind of intended to have as a first song, but it turned out to stick out a lot from the other songs, being all fucking scary and brutal and shit. 
compared to the other ones. Yeah. So we put that in the middle instead. And I think that and, track kind of makes sense where it is because you've got like that very slowed down chill track yeah. right before it. It's yeah. Yeah. The, the interlude with the interlude with vocals on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think, and then we, we just put absent persistent as the first song. We're like, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. it's a cool like introduction it's not not like an introduction it's more like a hey this is what we got this mm -hmm. is what you're gonna get kind of vibe yeah absolutely but, yeah and i think every song made sense especially when we saw the the mid split between for the uh, the vinyl like the a side ends with uh reverie the the interlude thing and then just B side starts with emulation at night, which explains in an anime to me like the first side being all softy boy and the second sound being like holy shit here we go kind of life. <laughs> yeah. So I, I like how that turned out as well. I was a little surprised because I didn't even think about that until it split it. So would you be able to tell us where headspace is at while you're creating this record? My headspace had a lot to do with um so we did grave you the the first album with me on it was like a test period for me and the band hmm. and that was pretty much like hey we gotta explore what we can do while we still have to focus on actually getting something done mm -hmm. so it was a little stressful we redid a lot of stuff some stuff didn't land where we wanted to be but we're still very proud of the outcome uh, and then we wrote the EP, the song Sleep, as if it never was. And we really got to test our waters because we produced the whole thing ourselves. And I did my vocals in Sweden in my like home studio situation. And uh, everything there was a lot of back and forth. But it was definitely like, okay, we're getting closer with using me as a vocalist in the band. Definitely getting closer. Mm. Uh, and then when we did the album, between the EP and the album, I practiced so much on singing. Um, so we just like hey we want to have fuck ton of singing on this album and it turned out even more than we want like initially wanted to Damn. and I'm so glad my, my headspace throughout that process was just let's get very creative like let's try to be very creative let's take our time let's make it as good as we fucking can and it really turned out great in that sense to but like song wise I feel like every song has its own vibe on the record which is a goal for me mm -hmm. with this record. So, I don't know. It just felt great throughout, all in all. Hell yeah. Hey, here, here's Keaton, the guitarist. Uh, Hi. <laughs> so many people joining in. I love it. Right. Yeah, we're, we're backstage at the, the Hole. I think it's Hole 44. Hole 44 in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And it's the backstage situation is kind of weird. It's basically just two rooms. <laughs> So people come and go and get to say hi. Yeah. Hello. Um, so this question should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you, you to describe this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Three words. Fuck me. Oh, my God. Hold on. I got to think about this. Uh, invent, comma, anime? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I, I want to keep it simple. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. It's soft. Mm -hmm. It's ambient. It's ambient. That's good. I would do that. I yeah. Mean, yeah. You perfectly described it that way when we were talking about the track list. So there we go. True. Yeah. 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 It definitely has those three elements throughout the whole record, which is pretty cool. Some songs have it out of them all. Mm -hmm. And some songs are more like controversial to one side and the other, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so how do you hope this album will impact and connect with your fans? I'm very excited for people to see one kind of like finished version of Inman Anime, mm -hmm. which is cool. Uh, it feels way more serious, way more th like thought out. Um, it's definitely heavier. I would say it's the heavier. So people can just expect it to be heavier, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Agreed. Uh, so can you talk about any particularly challenging or standout moments during the creation of the album? Some, some like choruses. Like we, we put a lot of weight into the choruses. We felt like, okay, this album's going to have good choruses. 
And there were some courses that we just couldn't get the way we wanted to until the very end, of, obviously, because they turned out on record. Oh. Um, but I feel... Uh, I think writing the the screaming patterns and the lyrics, like putting in the lyrics in Emulation of Night was fucking hard. That was very hard. And I'm glad it turned out the way it did because it wasn't the initial initial idea. idea. <laughs> uh, but I think that was the most challenging thing for me personally, just trying to get that one good. Mm-hmm. Also, the chorus in Amber Glow took some time to figure it out as well because we did it on our own uh, completely out of, from scratch because it was basically the song wasn't even done instrumentally before we started doing that. Wow. But that one turned out great as well in the end. Yeah. Hell yeah. Also, there's some there's a lot of falsetto on this album, and that's some like a new thing to me. Mm-hmm. So playing with the the ways of using falsetto with my voice voice is definitely challenging. Hell yeah. You're natural though. So yeah. <laughs> I'm loving I'm loving how much like Thank experimentation you. there is on the record and how much like out of the box you kind of went vocally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. Uh, so, because you're on tour, we have to ask, what is your go-to gas station snack? You. So, we're in Europe right now, which is kind of weird, because every gas station is different, because uh, we're in a different country almost every day. Mm-hmm. But I Crazy. I love, I just love me, like, all the new versions of Twix. Like, they got Twix salt, salt with caramel, they got Twix, like, white chocolate, Twix with coffee tape. There's a lot of fucking Twix. But yeah, I do love me a donut. A good donut. Like a gas. Also, I am from Sweden and we drink a lot of black coffee. And uh, just a regular nasty gas station coffee. At least you admit it's gross. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So for the last couple questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? So Death Row is the the last stop, I guess. Mm-hmm. The yeah. Green Mile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my so wait so last food and drink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would go with uh, a carrot cake. Ooh, yeah. And a cream soda. Okay. Ooh, mm. so you're going yeah, out I'm, with, I'm, a, with I'm, a dessert. Dude, I'm going out with like a sugar crash. I don't care. But <laughs> <laughs> not. You won't be able to strap you down into the chair. You're gonna be so jumpy. <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> no. Uh, so, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Star Wars. Star Wars? <laughs> Hell yeah. Definitely Star Wars, yeah. 100%. Or, wait, hold on. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll go with Star Wars. I'll go with Star Wars. Right. I was about to say Dune, but it's pretty much the same thing, to be honest. Yeah, it's it's roughly the same type of big, sandy planet, you know? True. Yeah, I mean, Dune was the precursor to all star wars so it kind of makes Absolutely. sense Absolutely. yeah um so i have not investing last question every single person that we've spoken to has said that it is the most important question what's your favorite color my favorite color mm-hmm. uh that green that looks expensive because our whole apartment looks that way but i can't remember the name of it is it like, like emerald yes there we go nice that, our couch is that, and I just love that couch so much. That's awesome. And it kind of when you, when you put when you put a lot of plants in your home, it kind of gets the emerald vibe, mm-hmm. which is I just love that. Whenever I go into a place and there's a lot of plants hanging from the ground, okay, this I like this place immediately. Oh yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, so as I said, that's all the questions we have to say. Is there anything that you would like to plug? I just want to make sure people don't miss when we drop this album. It's out on the. Uh, March 17th, which is pretty much two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, a little over two weeks. And I'm so excited to see what people actually think of this shit. It's going to be great. Hell yeah. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah. well, well, thank you for now. It's been Marcus from Invent Animate, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast. <laughs>